This is a classic bicycle rear wheel fitted with a six-speed cassette built in the 1980s that features a cup and cone style hub. The cup and cone style hub has been with us for a hundred years but it's still featured on modern bicycles such as Giant Content 2020 model year. The wheels still come with cup and cone style hubs, so do many entry-level road bikes, entry-level mountain bikes, city bikes, cruiser bikes, very simple hybrid hybrid bikes as well. So cup and cones are here to say, here to stay. They are fairly straightforward to work with, but they are a bit of a tedium. In this video, I'm going to show you how to adjust after this axle has been uh, maintained or rebuilt or lubricated whichever the case might be in your case I'll show you how it's adjusted so that it's not wobbly let me just set it to wobble such as so that it's not wobbly side to side like this neither is it too tight or too binding as they say so I have here a greasy component which is difficult to observe but I will use some of this as well as I have another bicycle wheel there also with the same cup and cone style hub with dry components so I'm gonna contrast the two of them this one has a quick release axle meaning the axle itself is hollow and this quick release skewer goes through it. So adjusting this play in the bearings is fairly straightforward in theory but like I said it's tedious. Before you adjust that distance it's really really important to make sure that the distance here at the end of an axle is identical for both sides. In this case I'm just gonna snug it up like so. There it's snugged up. The number of threads showing is four from the point where the threads start which is right around here at my fingernail there. That's where the first thread starts. So that's one, two, three full turns and if it's really snugged up it's gonna be about three and a half, almost four turns. I have exactly the same number of turns on the opposite side. So that's important that the axle be centered in the hub. Let me just find you the spot where the thread starts, right around here right around here is where the thread starts you can see that it starts the first thread is being cut there and goes around once so over here you have one two three and four full threads showing the other side which has sorry which has about three and a half or something like that when everything is snugged up on this side it's gonna be four I know this so let me explain the with the dry components how this is going to be set up. What you see is out of that wheel and what's exposed on this side of the wheel here that you see this last lock nut is this nut here. This one is not a hollow axle, it doesn't have a skewer through it that's for that wheel. This one has a lug nut that holds the wheel in the frame. So this is the nut that you see right here at the cassette set. This lock nut. This lock nut has to be tightened up against a sleeve and the sleeve against this cone. This needs two wrenches rotating in different directions. 15 millimeter down there 17 millimeter for the lock nut holding the cone in place so this is this is how the first the the start the this side where the cassette is 
this has to be tightened first. This was tightened with two wrenches, like so, while this was out of the hub. Okay, because this sleeve and everything and this 15 millimeter component is buried and disappears inside the freewheel and it's not accessible, so it has to be tightened up out here. The rest of the components will be accessible, all the lock nuts and the last item that you see there is the edge of the cone. So you can see the as a cone right next to the spacer or uh, sorry this uh, dust shield so a wrench needs to be placed on the 15 millimeter sorry a 15 millimeter wrench needs to be placed on this cone and the lock ring tightened against it but the distance between cone and cone is critical it has to be just right so it's not wobbly and if they are too close together it's going to be binding as well so in order to do this before this lock nut is tightened the cone distance needs to be these, these ones are locked together already this cone distance here which is the loose cone needs to be dialed in like so once it's positioned and it's only by feel how much play it has side to side it has to have zero detectable play side to side once it's done overturn it a little bit to verify that it's binding and catching and turn it back once you're happy with the placement of this cone without moving the axle any further because if you move the axle like this inadvertently it's gonna change this distance so ideally, once you once you've fine-tuned where this cone placement should be on the axle, put a 15 mm wrench on this and tighten the lock nut against it the same way as it was tightened on that side. When you tighten the two together, the axle might rotate, however slightly. The slight rotation, you can see the slightest rotation on the axle. It's not a quarter turn, it's not an eighth of a turn or whatever small amount. It's like microscopic. This microscopic amount of rotation on the axle will affect the distance between the cones and will make it either just a hair too loose or just beginning to bind. So get ready for tedious, get ready for this lock nut tightening to be repeated multiple times until you end up with a distance from cone to cone that is neither too wobbly nor binding so I'm not a great fan of of uh, cup and cone but it's a design that's been proven and it works so in order to start because I have a second lock nut here I'm just gonna back it away. I'm gonna work with the cone and that lock nut. But first, of course, I'm gonna have to dial in the placement of this cone. I'm gonna rotate the axle by my other hand. And right now it's loose and wobbly. And it's also wobbly this way. I'm shaking it sideways. Also wobbly this way, so that's too much if I tighten it and I'm just gonna rotate the axle with my other hand with my right hand right now it's right now it's not wobbly it's not moving in and out too much at all it's quiet and it's not binding I'm gonna over rotate it and make it binding that's about half a turn and at this point and at this point let me just okay I know you can't really see binding but maybe you can hear binding 
is a little bit binding and I can make it possibly just a bit more pronounced okay there you go it's a little bit crunchy so but it has to be felt that I, there's no other way to describe it that it's binding and it's and it's too tight okay so it needs to be backed off just a just a little bit like so not too much and the lock nut tight end in about this position here of course if the other washer and the other lock nut is annoying you just get rid of it and work with just two things at a time so that's gonna take me another I don't know five minutes to dial it in it's finicky